Hey, good morning, everybody. Just got home from work and I had been wanting to do a video somewhat similar to this one. If you remember back in the very beginning of when everything started, uh, especially when things started to get closed, one of the first things that typically were closed were churches. You probably heard even to the point where I think Gavin Newsom, <clears throat> excuse me, even to the point where they were, you know, I think Gavin Newsom and some other politicians were even saying that you shouldn't even sing, right? You shouldn't even sing out loud uh, if you if they allowed you to go to church for fear of spreading the virus. For many individuals, uh, probably didn't even go to church. They probably had some sort of a Zoom meeting, uh, despite you know the Book of Hebrews talking about not forsaking the gathering of yourselves. All the more so as you behold the day drawing near. Now, of course, typically you see these sort of tactics, like for example, during like Hitler's time and Stalin's time. And for a reason is because typically you go to church and you hear the word of God and it is, there is meaning put into it. Like the apostle Paul had said, you're going to, Using the New uh, Living Translation, it says, For the Word of God is alive and is powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. And so typically in these sort of times where a narrative is spun, typically one of the first things that they do is they would typically go for the bible or in some respects for religion in general but for the most part especially towards christianity and it's for this very reason because the wisdom that comes from the bible can be utilized to cut through uh, the narratives that individuals try try to spin especially when it comes to forsaking your freedom or supposed safety from the government we know as christians that the whole world as the bible says is lying in the power of the wicked one and that of course would include governments and so we don't put our faith in government or in man in general as the bible says that your spirit goes out in that day you die and your thoughts of course perish and that's why we don't put our trust or our faith in men because they are here today and then gone tomorrow and so all of the good that a person might try to do can basically be undone because that person can lose their life either naturally or that their lives can be taken from them so the bible encourages not to put your faith in humans but to put your faith in the god of the bible especially so we see that today and we will see it moving forward of that i have no doubt especially with what's coming in the near future which is why you saw images of for example um like antifa or blm that they were going into churches and basically attacking them um even though you know some churches even putting you know the black lives matter banners as a way to show solidarity and of course again as christians we don't back governments or authorities of that sort because the government that we look forward to is the one spoken of in the Bible that Jesus taught Christians to that Jesus taught his followers to pray, right? Taught us to pray for your kingdom to come and your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. And of course, so when we see what is happening today with the food shortages and earthquakes, etc., Jesus, of course, had forewarned that these things would happen, but that they would only be the beginnings of what he referred to as the pangs of distress. And so what, we're, what seems to be the global agenda, of course, is the leaning towards a one, a one world government, right? So that's why you've, that's basically what the pandemic has been utilized for, to basically uh, rob the poor for even the little that people have nowadays and it, which is why you've seen businesses being shut down even though there's no science to why the one particular business is closed and the other one is allowed to remain open 
And so you have millions upon millions upon millions of people just here in America that are, that are out of work and that they're basically waiting for a check from the government. And of course, the government will tie that into the vaccine. Of that, I have no doubt. They've already sprinkled the thought on both the Republican and the Democratic side. Now, whether you choose to take it is up to you. I would encourage you to do your research. I've done numerous videos talking about the vaccine as well as the virus and how and the lethality of it. We've seen from the use of broken broken swabs, inappropriate testing, the narrative of uh, asymptomatic spread, of which I've done numerous videos for. You can check my, my videos. I've done quite a number of them. What's happening now, if you're not paying attention globally, is that there are warnings of food shortages that will be taking place. The largest food bank here in New Jersey is warning that I believe is around 80% or 100% increase in food scarcity that is coming just for those in New Jersey. We've seen due to the power outages um, that took place in Texas, there are numerous crops and, of course, dairy products that as a result of the power outage, according to the narrative, that needed to be dumped and spilled and basically thrown away. The same narrative was also spun during the beginning of the pandemic because most food products, because for the most part, especially here in New York, there are so many restaurants. So overwhelmingly, most of the food that comes to large cities like New York is typically reserved for restaurants. And of course, because so many restaurants were shut down, there was a large number of food that was basically destroyed, even to this day. It's easily verifiable with a simple search on something like Google or on DuckDuckGo. You can find there's numerous articles talking about uh, the food shortages that, of course, are to come. And of course, all the while that this is going on, there has, of course, been a basically a swapping of resources from the majority of people and of course it has basically pushed up to the upper echelon of individuals there was an article here i had already read it but with forbes uh basically you know you can only read the article so many times before they basically want you to subscribe but as you can see i'll leave the link to it it says meet the 50 doctors and scientists and healthcare entrepreneurs who became pandemic billionaires in 2020 and there's another article here talking about wall street minted 56 new billionaires since the pandemic began but many families are left behind and this is exactly what i had talked about in my last video that the pandemic is too lucrative there is too much incentive for governments and big businesses, of course, to basically just let this go by and give everybody a vaccine and have life go back to normal. That is not the outcome. It is easily verifiable. I've done numerous uh, videos talking about a global slowing down of the vaccine as well as, in terms of distribution, as well as a, a slowdown in the distribution here locally in New York, as well as in places like uh, Canada, Pennsylvania, etc. Uh, I'll probably be doing another one as I've come across numerous other um, articles where people are not understanding why they're saying that the vaccine is going to be distributed, but then there is this artificial slowing down. And of course, it's because everybody has their hand in the cookie jar from the people who make masks to therapeutic companies like, for example, Moderna that out of nowhere came up with a with a vaccine for a novel virus. Even though this company, of course, has never released a vac uh, has never released a medication, let alone a vaccine for a novel virus, and so it's and it's like I've said, because of the overwhelming incentive, the goal, of course, is to impoverish the nation, which is why going forward you'll see more about the Green New Deal, which of course will kill jobs, the fifteen dollars, uh, you know, that that Joe Biden wants to increase. Um, the federal minimum wage to $15, that will kill well over a million, you know, a couple of million uh, jobs alone, just because artificially increasing people's rate will cause people not to hire. Because of people moving, for example, from here in New York, there will be rampant crime. It is already, um, is basically already showing itself. Uh, and I've looked at 
for example, uh, what was it? I think it's CBS New York um, is typically one that I follow. And literally every, that's not even every single day. I would say it's multiple times throughout the day where they're, where they're showing numerous um, like articles or videos of clips of this person being stabbed, this person being killed, robberies. Um, there was a meth lab here in the Bronx that was recently exposed. And this will continue to go on because of the numerous stabbings that have gone on. They've you know, been requesting for more police, etc. And all of these are just basically signs of the times of basically what is coming. And so you might even hear of, for example, politicians wanting to remove uh, gender terms like, for example, mother, brother, father, etc. And of course, even from those who claim to be of a religious background, right? And of course, this is especially important because as Christians, you know, Jesus said, all of you are brothers, right? We refer to uh, God the Father and God, and of course, talking about um, the Son of God, etc. So these typical terms, of course, will be utilized against Christians who, for whatever reason, it's probably just the, basically the beginning of trying to remove, um, I guess, terms that we typically use in everyday life for the purpose of distorting language and that he that controls the, the language controls the narrative. Just like, for example, there were certain drugs that were not allowed to be utilized um, for pandemic patients. There was, there was the narrative that, you know, the, the medication doesn't work. And of course, now, you know, we're seeing studies coming out that it actually, that it actually does work to some, to some extent, depending upon, of course, when the medication is used. And it's important to understand that this is not going to go away. I know many people thought that they were just going to, you know, get a vaccine and that life was going to go back to normal and would go back to large gatherings. Unfortunately, as this system marches basically towards the end, and that's basically what we look for as Christians. We know that the that the the end of the system of things that Jesus referred to it has to come. You know, the nations. The Bible says, you know, they basically marching towards the great war of Armageddon, and so we should not be surprised when we see these sort of things. But as the Bible says, all the more so. We need to gather to remain united, which, of course, which is why you see so much of a hatred between, especially here in America, between whites and blacks and Hispanics, etc. Right. And it's just as Jesus said that in the last days that there would be an enmity between people when he talked about it, Matthew chapter 24, that there would be hatred between, you know, nation against nation, nation against nation. And of course, people against people. Of course, we're going we're going to see more of that as the system of things starts to draw towards an end just basically wanted to share this i i would imagine you know now more than ever especially to have the soundness of mind that the bible that the bible does provide as it has wise words wise sayings and of course the experience of those who have come before us and have gone basically through basically gone through very similar experiences and have seen how God has been able to help them. And so all the more so, I've decided that I've wanted to take a lot more interest in getting back into doing my Bible reading. It is something that I recommend for, for, for you, for those who are watching this, as the days that are coming are going to be filled with fear, with, with more crime and poverty. If you're not paying attention to these things, I highly recommend that you do pay attention to what's going on in the world, especially when it comes to food shortages that are going to be coming. You will see food shortages as well as an increase in price of food. If you, I, I, I've been doing what I can to basically tell my coworkers, whether I come across doctors or other nurses, and I let everybody know if you have any sort of land or if you know anybody that has land, that once the season starts to begin where you're able to plant, that you should because days are coming where food prices will go up a lot of these companies like for example tyson are basically stating that there's going to be um, huge cost increases coming up to 30 percent you've got bill gates talking about of course wanting to make meat something more of, of a, a delicacy than a regular staple and instead they want to fill your bellies with artificial gmo foods this, of course, is all easily verifiable. 
with a simple search on the net, which is probably one of the reasons why he's buying up all the farmland. And it's and the and it's actually you know something to think about when you start to see all these ind individuals starting to plot very sinisterly, right? Why is he someone who is at the forefront of vaccination distribution when he's on numerous occasions has talked about eugenics and depopulation? These individuals typically are rooted in the occult, even though they may not profess to believe in God. I have no doubt that many of these individuals fall and fall, you know fall into some of these um, dabblings into the occult and things that are leaning more towards uh, satanic worship. And there's of course there's always been talks about this, but we can never you know come up with some sort of hard evidence. But it's by their own actions and by the things that come out of their mouths that, as Jesus said, by your own mouth you are judged which is one of the reasons why you hear things about Bill Gates basically trying to blot out the sun. That's another one that's a really interesting read. It's called uh, Sun Dimming, where he's actually trying to decrease the amount of sunlight that comes, the amount the, that comes to the earth. Some of these individuals have very satanic way of thinking. Really important. Most of the time we hear these things and we think that they're just crazy. Then we don't even put any mind to it. But unfortunately... Many of these individuals have authority on the earth to a very great extent because people choose not to stand up to them. You're going to have to wait and see how all this is going to how all this is going to unfold. But now more than ever, we're going to we're going to uh, to lean on the God of the Bible and the wisdom that he has put forth through his word. Thanks for watching. and I'll catch you next time.